Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to add in an admin area to our website. As ever with development, there are many ways that we could create an admin area. Perhaps the simplest way is just to use your database client. All the information that we need is already here. We can create, read, update and delete without a huge amount of effort, but it does fall down a bit when it comes to creating relations such as our wallpapers are related to our categories. It's not the most human friendly but it is a decent solution, especially when just starting out. And the advantage of doing this is that you don't have to write any code, which means less bugs. And in a way, it's much harder for someone to do malicious things. However, beyond the basics, and especially if you're working with others, and again, especially if those others are not technical, then you're probably going to want an admin area. Now, up until quite recently with Symphony, this has been a bit of a problem. I've tried a bunch of solutions to this over the years, and it's only recently, with the rising popularity of Easy Admin Bundle, that I felt comfortable going with a third-party bundle over rolling my own. We're going to make use of Javier Agulier's Easy Admin Bundle, and I apologise if I'm mispronouncing that. And whilst we're on GitHub, I would strongly recommend that you check out the root of Javier's GitHub repository, as it's full of really great libraries that come under this Easy Corp umbrella. One thing in particular that I really like is the Easy Log Handler, which just gives some really nice output compared to the standard Symfony login. But I don't want to dwell on that too much, as it's really off topic for the purposes of this video. Now, if you haven't seen the Easy Admin Bundle in action already, then what I would suggest you do is watch the first video in this series where we cover it towards the end of that video quite quickly, but you will get an overview as to what we're working towards. As ever with Symphony, at least up until Symphony Flex, we're going to have to do a little bit of configuration. So I'm just going to take a copy of this piece, drop it into my command line and let it do its thing. And whilst it's doing that in the background, I'm also going to take a copy of this and open up my app kernel and just paste it in there. And again, just for clarity, these are the bundles that come when we install the Symphony framework. These are my own third party choices and this is my first party code. It's just the way that I like to work. There are a couple of extra things that we need to do, such as load the roots of this bundle. So again, I'm just going to take a copy of that. And as it says, you need to pop this into app config routing. I'm just going to drop it above app. And the last thing that we need to do as far as configuration is to prepare the web assets of the bundle. So we're on Symphony 3. I'm just going to take a copy of that. You can see everything's gone through and finished. And there we go. That should all be good. Let's clear that off. Do a PHP bin console debug router. I just want to flag up here that you're going to get two entries for admin. This isn't a mistake. The root named admin is deprecated and will be removed in a future version of the easy admin bundle. So let's jump back to our site and I'm going to try and hit slash admin now. But before I do, I'm going to go to app dev PHP and make sure I put that in there and then hit admin. Really easy to forget to put in app underscore dev PHP there. And if you do, you may find that you're inadvertently working in the production environment without a cash clear. You're not going to know about the admin and there's a potential source of head scratching for a while. Anyway, as you can see, it says the back end is empty and we need to put in some configuration. Now, again, inside the documentation, there's a bit here where it tells us to put this into app config config YAML. However, what I've found is that when we're using the easy admin bundle, our configuration tends to grow and beyond even just a couple of entities. What I found is that my config YAML had this big section at the bottom and we're getting hundreds of lines. And so instead, I would prefer to split this out into its own configuration. So what I'm going to do is at the very top of my config YAML, I'm just going to duplicate a line here and then I'm going to put config easy underscore admin underscore bundle dot YAML. And so what that means is it's going to import a resource which doesn't yet exist, which lives inside here which is going to be config easy underscore admin underscore bundle. And you can see we've got this double config, which is a bit weird. So as you can see, app config config easy admin bundle. So the naming's not great, but honestly, I prefer it to having everything under my config YAML. And this goes for services and stuff as well. I like to split everything out. Just makes it so much easier when doing like merge requests and whatnot on bigger projects. As my theory is, if you're editing config.yaml, you're editing like the core of the site and you're not really editing the core of the site when you're working with the admin panel. So anyway, that's why I like to split it out. You don't need to. We're going to start off. I'm going to create a key in here, easy admin, under which I'm going to have another key called entities. And we've got two entities in our project. We've got the wallpaper and we've got category. 
Wallpaper is actually a bit of a painful one to start with because there's a few things going on there, particularly the image is going to be a little bit tricky. So for the moment, we'll go with the easy one, which is basically category, which has two properties, only one of which is really interesting to us, the name. So it makes it nice and simple to start with. So we'll just say category is our entity and you can call this anything, but as we're working with a category, it makes sense to call it the category. And that category is going to have the class of app bundle entity category. And with that, tiny amount of config we now have a working back end we can only work with categories at this point because that's the only thing that we have added into our config but we can go ahead and add a new category we can edit that category and then of course we can delete it as well and of course there's other cool stuff in here like search and if we had more results which you will see when we have our wallpaper set up we'll have pagination built in and honestly, for the tiny amount of effort that we've had to put in, this is a pretty amazing addition to our project. It's fully responsive, so you can pass it off to clients and whatnot. And it's very configurable. Strongly recommend that you check out the docs at this point, as making changes is not that hard, and more than likely you're going to want to customise it. Okay, so in the very next video, we're going to get on with adding in our wallpaper entity.